Chris Mayne, thanks for coming in. No worries, thanks for having me. You were right on the scene of that. What were your observations at the, on the, at the time? Yeah, I, I remember Ruffy uh, at the time, once we come together as a group, he said it, and I think that's when both said, mate, time to get off. And then you're trying to, you know, you've got six seconds to try and figure everything out that's going on, and next minute you turn around, and he's gone, and we've got to try and cover Lynch. So it was uh, definitely a big task for us. So the story is amusing, but um, he's obviously. Uh, the effects are, are reasonably significant. Yeah, I think all reports is that he's he has passed his test. I think it's now just about going through the procedures to get right for the weekend. So hopefully all tomorrow he, he trains well and feels great and we have him back out there. So if Braden Maynard wasn't there and it was just you, did you see enough to say, we've got to get this guy off? Yeah, well, I think the conversation was had and he was just, I think he was expressing how he's feeling and it was just, yeah, get off, get off when you can. Um, obviously go straight away, you know, yep. the, the concussion is pretty serious and something that we take seriously as well as players, so um, I think it, he went off not long straight after that and then, yeah, how he comes off after the bench says, yeah, mate, Ruffy's done, so. He got, he got a knock also from a body in a marking contest thereafter, but the tumble punt, you hit kind of the belly of the ball and she comes off real hard. Were you close to the kick that hit him in the head? It must have sounded like a a thud of a baseball bat on yeah, there. Yeah, no, it wasn't close enough, but uh, knowing Ruffy to, you know, do something like that to the big fella, uh, must have been kicked pretty hard. And being a wet footy and a wet night doesn't make it any better either. The ricocheted back a fair way. It did. <laughs> it did. So Collingwood's giving day, and this is something that Jordan's really passionate about, so this is next Tuesday. And the ambition is to, what, to raise a million dollars in 24 hours? Yeah, so on Tuesday, through the Magpie Nest program of Salvation Army, the aim is to raise a million dollars for the day. Um, which obviously goes towards helping homeless people get off the street and having better housing conditions. I think at the moment there's already 45 houses that are out there that are helping um, with 120 people getting off the street. So players will be at the club on the Tuesday by the phones waiting for people to call in um, and donate, but you can also go through the website as well. So big day for the club and yeah. um, for the Salvation Army and, and hopefully we can get that target and more. I'm quite community conscious. See, Jordan Degoe does a fair bit of work with... He wants no fanfare about it as well, so I've just given him some, haven't I? Uh, yeah, but they're very community conscious, the so boys down there. Tuesday, a great day for Colin. Sunday is a big day, isn't it, just to level things up a bit? Yeah, oh, look, Sunday's going to be another challenge um, for the group going forward, obviously. Been well publicised, the injury, injury list we have at the moment, but um, for us as a playing group, it's next man in, and, and Sunday's occasion comes up against Gold Coast, so it's going to be... Another challenge going forward to hopefully earn the right to play finals footy. It's different though. When you look next to you out on the ground and you see one player go down, another player goes down, another, and they're all, a lot of them have been big name players. It, it has to do something to the psyche of the players that are out there going, gee, we've got some unfamiliar faces here and we've lost a little bit of ability, a little bit of talent. That's got to sap the confidence a bit. I think if you take your best six players out of any side, it makes yep. it really challenging. Um, and before the game, we lose Taylor Adams, and then before half-time, we lose Ruffy. So it's always a challenge when your best players aren't playing um, because the best thing about bringing in younger players is that you've got a really good core of senior players that can help them throughout the game. But when you've got more younger play players and um, debutants coming through, then it makes it pretty challenging on game day to get the job done, especially coming up against a side at the time like Richmond, who were pretty much full strength. 20 players are listed on your injury list. I just had a, a read then. And only Nathan Murphy is a, a certain to play this week. Well, they said he's available this week. Everybody else is still to be confirmed or out for a period of time. Last year you had it also. I think it was against the Swans. So you had about choice number five playing on Lance Franklin. Mm. But the timing, at least you got a couple back. Do you feel like... Gods against you with the timing this year? Yeah, oh, the last two years have definitely been tough with the injuries, but there's some things that we can't control, and I think looking through the, the AFL at the moment, the old hammies, cards, everything like that is pretty much throughout all teams, but I think now for the playing group is that, yeah, the players that are coming in, we still have to do our role and our job to get, to get it done. So this week coming against Gold Coast, whoever comes in um, has to play their role to get the job done. An aspiring coach too, he's doing mm. his coaching certificate, it could be another one we'll talk about in a couple of years. <laughs> so you've seen a little bit of Chris's coaching. I've seen him, yeah, he's gone down to the Sandy Dragons. You What's still his go style, Derm? Style of coaching? Uh, he walks around with his hands behind his back at the moment <laughs> very, very well, which is a very important <laughs> part of coaching. How are you enjoying it though? Yeah, no, look, I'm loving it. Uh, I think earlier in the uh, the year, especially in the pre-season, got down there a couple of times a week, but throughout the season, been once a Is week, it? yeah, trying to get down there and pretty much just development, working with all the kids. Um, What's your aspirations? Uh, I want to be a head coach um, and obviously once our footy's kind of 
time's up there is to step into either development or a line coach straight away and then yeah as time comes be a senior coach. In the experiences that you've had as a player and most of the coaches don't have the smoothest path through their playing days do you feel like you've experienced a lot of different things that will serve you well in that aspiration? Yeah definitely I think from obviously from early Freo days to where I am now um, you know I've definitely seen a bit of a roller coaster of a ride of ups and downs and being able to be under three different coaches and millions of assistants and then obviously some great senior players with, with Pav and, and being able to play with Pendles now that you get to learn a lot from all types of characters and, and kind of where you want to mould yourself. Um, and being able to be a people's person is kind of the coaching that I want to be able to kind of portray in the art of it rather than the science. I think um, you, know, you can have a lot of tacticians underneath you getting all the science in but being able to coach a group is something that I want to look forward to. always room for blood and guts. If you could take one trait from Bucks, what would it be? Uh, definitely the love um, that he's been able to portray the last couple of years. That love that he gives out to all these players um, and getting to know them off the field is, yep. is something pretty special. That's what you could take. <laughs> <laughs> Discover the love case. Chris, good on you. Thanks for deputising for Jordan Ruffin no tonight. Worries. Thank you very So me. Collingwood's Giving Day is next Tuesday. Every dollar you donate will be matched by three generous club donors.